Hey guys, how's it going? I just wanted to create a follow-up video to my recent video about my first impressions with Prisma and using it with Nest.js. So if you watch that video in full, one of the things that I discovered in that first impressions video is that Prisma actually really nicely auto-generates some type definitions for you. And that includes things like the shape of potential DTOs of a request body. So for example, if you had an API that creates authors, for a library API, they create, they auto generate these types for you that allows you to represent what might that DTO look like. Oh, you're trying to create author. They're probably going to have a name and uh, a list of books. Now, while it is great that Prisma is able to auto generate those type definitions for you, there's kind of an important gap, which is that at least in Nest.js, typically how you would do input validation, you know, runtime validation of models is that you do it through class validator. You'd usually have a, a DTO like this, where there's a, you know, perhaps a name property in here, and then you'd be able to decorate this with your, your constraints, your rules. So for example, perhaps this is a min length of three, right? We're going to say that we're going to say that this name has to be at least three letters or so. But how do you do that for Prisma if it's auto generating the input and it's simply creating a type like this, it doesn't have that information that you typically would do in a class DTO. Now, what I want to talk about in this video is that I actually found a solution for this, although it's specifically for a GraphQL API. So I don't think it's going to apply to a REST API like in my impressions video, but I still think it's a, it's a very cool solution that I would imagine it's eventually going to come to the REST API space as well. So just jumping right into what that solution is, it's this package called Prisma Nest.js GraphQL. And we're going to go ahead and install this npm install Prisma Nest.js GraphQL. And I already have this installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my schema that Prisma file in here. This is the same Prisma file that I did in that impressions video. So we have that author model here. What we want to be able to do is basically we want to generate this class that we have without us writing it from scratch, right? We want to be able to say that this name has a min length of three, and we want to be able to do that right in this schema. So how we're going to be able to pull that off is notice how there's a generator sort of construct in here. We're going to add another generator in here that's coming from the new package that we just installed. So we're going to do generator nest GraphQL, and then you want to make sure that you provide a provider property in here that's using that new package that we just installed. And then you want to provide an output directory where those generated classes will be outputted. All right, next is that we want to say that we want something to be generated from class validator, right? Because that's specifically what we want to use. And the, the thing to catch here is that it doesn't have to be class validator. If you have another similar solution that does something similar with decorators, you can do that. But in our case, we want to use class validator because that's the default uh, thing that's used in the validation pipe in Nest.js. And then we also want to say that we want to generate those classes for inputs specifically. So basically your, your request bodies, your, your inputs in, in GraphQL. Now, once you have that in place, you have these things, what that now allows me to do is within the models themselves, I can actually add a comment in here saying at validator min length, right? And this, this validator matches the, the namespace that we provide here. So you're able to customize that namespace as well. But we're saying that this validator is coming from class validator. And then this is where we actually provide the, the decorator. Uh, configuration itself, right? With that in place, and also make sure you use three slashes in here. I'm not specifically sure why it needs to be three slashes. I think because uh, two slashes is not valid. I'm not sure, but that's what the documentation says you should do. So three slashes, and then your you know your decorator. All right, and then from here we just need to rerun our Prisma generate. So I'm gonna do npx Prisma generate. Hit enter. And you'll notice that it'll say, you know, you re regenerated the Prisma client. And it'll also say that it generated this new thing for the Nest.js GraphQL. Let's take a look at what that created. You'll notice that in our SRC folder, there is now a new add generated directory in here. And within that is going to be our models. And within 
author. You know, it's going to have all those similar Prisma generated type definitions, except they're going to be in uh, in classes, which is what you need for, for Nest.js, right, to have those decorators. So if we look up author create input, right here, author create input, and open that up, what does that look like? You'll notice that it is an input type of author create input, and it's going to have validator admin length and where does validator come from it comes from class validator so this effectively you know if we were using graphql this was in my previous video a a rest api if we were using graphql we should be able to replace this with author create input from my src generated prisma nestgs graphql directory right and that completely allows you to delete this create DTO and just rely on that generated DTO, right? So if you're specifically using Prisma with GraphQL and you wanted to also be able to auto generate your input types, your DTOs, this is it. This is your, your solution. And this allows you to basically have, you know, your schema, your Prisma schema is able to represent all of the schemas, not just your, your database schema, but also your DTO schemas, your input input type schemas. All right, so that's just a really quick video that I wanted to share. This was actually from one of the viewers of that impressions video. They gave a hint to do this, and I really, I really wish that it would work for REST. Maybe it could if you kind of hacked it a little bit, um, but if you're specifically using Nest.js, Prisma, and GraphQL together, this is a, a pretty cool solution to know about. And this package actually isn't specifically just for, for validation. It, it's really for specifically generating object types, input, and args for GraphQL APIs. Um, but it just happens to support custom decorators. That's how we're able to bring in class validator. All right, guys, super short video. Again, I just wanted to do a quick follow-up from the previous one. If there's any other tips and tricks you want to share with me in the comments, let me know, and I'll definitely explore them. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.